Hello everyone! Today we'll be talking about another amazing serve, and this one's from Mizutani. Let's have a look. You see, the ball comes seemingly straight towards you, but it curves away once it reaches the end of the table. So what happened? It is not magic. It is physics. In order to analyze this serve, we have to know about the spins on the ball. So there are two categories. The first one is uh, in the vertical direction. So like your top spin, the back spin, that it controls the movement of the ball in the vertical direction. And the second one is in the horizontal direction, that's your side spins, left and right side. Then that controls the movement, uh, uh, right and left. And now let's break down Mizutani's serve. At first, it jumps towards you and at the end of the table it seems to slow down and it doesn't really jump out of the table. So that change in speed in the vertical direction uh, gives an idea that there's definitely going to be backspin on the ball. And then you realize that at the end of the table it starts to curve. And that um, sideway movement should indicate the presence of side spin. So if you want to, to curve to the left, then there's left side spin on the ball. So now you know that the curve is caused by both backspin and side spin. So a lot of people think, oh, the curve is just side spin, you know, like this. But if it's just only side spin, the ball's never gonna stay on the table and produce a curve. So you need that, you need the backspin on the ball to produce that curve. So when you practice, you should always start with low tossers. But um, for the sake of time, I'll just jump right into high toss. First step is that you have to find a comfortable standing position and I think you should always leave an angle between uh, your, the direction your body is facing and the line of the table. So this, there should be an angle. And then you should lean forward a little bit and then put your hand somewhere here. And then try to toss the ball straight up. Oh my god, the ceiling is so short. Short. Try to throw the ball straight up so that the ball lands somewhere in front of you. But it's not good to keep the ball too close to your body. So it makes it really hard for you to um, serve straight down the line. Because sometimes you'll miss the table. Now a lot of people ask, why do some world-class players have this motion before they actually contact the ball? And the, the answer to that question is, I don't know. I do that too and I find it really useful. Uh, maybe because when we toss the ball, our bodies tend to lean, uh, lean back and towards your right. And by doing this, it sort of cancels out that component and it, it gives your body more balance and also it stabilizes your... There's wire. It stabilizes your toss. Also, I think it relaxes my arm before I contact the ball and also gives me a good sense of timing, you know. To just you should try it. And if you have any other interpretations of that, it's useful, um, leave it in the comments. Okay. Your grip. So that's scary. Um, so I still wouldn't crawl my three fingers back here. I, I would still keep two fingers at least on the side of the racket. And then maybe you can keep your uh, pinky free there. So you, you, you still have your wrist movement and at the same time, you've got power uh, when you need it, and so you can tighten the grip whenever you want, and this gives you more control. Now the ball is up in the air, you should swing back your arm. And then remember, now you have to produce that side and backspin. In, in my last, uh, in my Marlins Go Serve video, I showed you how to do a backspin, so it contacts from the bottom. And in order to add some side spin to that, just Tilt the racket this way, and then the motion is uh, very similar. Now there are several ways to add spin on your ball. First, you always have to use your wrist, right? So this part, when you contact the ball. 
And then you can also use your elbow. So when, when you stick out your elbow, your hand naturally comes in. So this also helps you to accelerate. More players do this. And we have one more way. Some of you might already know from my gold serve video, you can practice on the bed. So in front of the bed, uh, try to use your wrist and also this elbow motion. And then try to put as much spin as possible on the ball. And then once you get consistent in that, come down to the table. And you don't have to start by, you know, right away by serving here. Just, you know, find somewhere and then start doing your serves. And then now you don't have to worry about, you know, the length or the, the ball comes back or not. Comes back or not. But just try it. Some people think that if they put a lot of force on the ball, the ball is going to be really spinning. And it turns out it might not be the case because it really tenses off your arm, like this. And in order to have effective brushing, you have to keep the ball as long as possible in your racket. So you need to have a smooth and natural motion, like this. The second common mistake is that People think, oh, I'm gonna put off spin on the ball, so I've got to have this oh, huge stroke. Let's do it like this. You see that a lot of world class players, their stroke is really small and efficient. It's because, well, this part before and this part after is completely useless because you're not contacting the ball. But this part is very important. And a good tip is to tighten your grip. Uh, why do we do that? There's several reasons. Uh, first, it helps with brushing. Because in order to tighten the grip, first you have to accelerate. And then at the end, you gotta hold your racket. So it stops. And this change in speed helps you to concentrate your power on that one point. So like this. And instead of this long stroke, but it's in constant speed, and you don't really have like a contact point to focus your power and it's just ineffective compared to this. The second point is that by, by holding back your power but controlling it, you're actually controlling the ball to be short on the table. And that's very important to a good serve because well, if your average serve just comes long, your opponent is going to attack you very easily and that is not good for you. So remember to do this. And now you ask, how do you keep it short on the table? So there are several techniques for that. First, the mo and the most common one is your first bounce on the table. So if your first bounce is close to the net, your serve is probably going to be short. And if your first bounce is close to your edge, so the serve is long. And secondly, it depends on your brushing versus hitting ratio. So if your ball is dropping out of the table all the time, then you probably need to brush it more. Um, and if it's not going over the net, you means, it means you're brushing too thinly and you should probably add a bit more hitting component. And also, um, if, it's, if you want to keep the ball short, then you should probably add more backspin on the ball so to control this vertical movement. And like any other shots, you always have to use your body in favor of your, you know, your arm and your stroke. So, but you, sometimes you might not see it in the serves because, you know, well, their, move, their waist movement is really small and you, you, most of it's internal. You probably won't see it, but just try it uh, without using your body, just only your arm. And you'll find that your body is kind of in a way and resisting the motion of your arm. And that's not comfortable. And you, so you have to use your whole body in order to have more power. And also it helps you to get back into your ready position. So it's good. In order to increase the quality of your serves, uh, and this is useful for all serves, I want to talk about timing. So I think you have to wait for the ball to drop around the height of the net, then contact the ball there. So that helps you to lower the arc instead of you know contacting ball here. The arc is really high. And also, your contact point on your racket should be 
uh, towards the head of the racket. And that helps you to add more spin. But not necessarily more power though, because well, you get more power contacting around the middle. But you don't really need power in your serve. So. And I think that's all the important points I can think of. And remember to keep in mind those points when you're practicing. Because I think practice without a mind there is really useless. Because you're, you're only going to master your mistakes. And you know, you can videotape your serves and then later you can compare it with other players. Or you can, you know, find your mistakes and correct them. And lastly, I'll finish off by talking about the pros and cons of the serve. So, you know there's heavy side spin on the serve, and it produces really drastic change in the direction of the ball. So it usually gives your opponent difficulty to find the precise position for the ball. And also, might, they might mistaken some short serves as long serves because, well, they think, oh, the ball's coming long, but it's actually curving away on the table. And also, as the ball curves away, it loses some of its uh, vertical component, so it's, it's harder to push over the net. But at the same time, your side spin can hurt you. If your opponent just normally uh, pushes over, then the balls definitely have side spin on it. And most likely, the ball is going to curve to your right, and then you have to make space to accommodate for that change for your next attack. And remember, practice and patience make perfect. Tell me how you do and have fun and good luck.